Hello, I'm Fred McNeil, and I'd like to thank you for watching QAC TV. You know, we've developed a wonderful show. It's called Commissioner's Corner. All during the election, we heard from the uh, elected commissioners. You know what we want to do? We want to communicate the best we can with the citizens of Queen Anne's County. And today we have Commissioner Paul Comfort with us. Paul, thanks for coming again, all right? Sure. You kicked this whole thing off, and I think you've done a great job, okay, of putting the word out there. We're enthusiastic, and we want to share information with you. So that you should all be congratulated for. Thanks. Okay. Now, let's start off. One of the things I've heard, as uh, a matter of fact, I said this to Jim Moran. I said this to the Commissioner Bucky. A lot of people, the Dunkin' Donuts crowd, I call it, all right, are saying, you know what, we're watching these commissioners on TV, we're seeing in the public, they seem to be cooperating with each other, working hard, and they seem to be making every effort they can to govern, to do the best they can for the people. You want to comment on that? Yeah, well, um, I, I think it's neat to be part of this group. Uh, we've got what I'm calling, like, it's a rich tapestry. Each commissioner has the own, their own little areas that they're interested sure. in, their own focus points. And uh, so we aren't really stepping on each other's toes too much. You know, if you, uh, local politicians, I've been around local government all my career, you know, 27 yeah. years now. And uh, a lot of local politicians, you know, they get involved because they want to do something. Sure. You know, and if we all want to do the same thing, we could step on each other's toes. But what's great about this board is it's not that way. So, for instance, you mentioned Jim Moran. So, Commissioner Moran, as our at-large commissioner, uh, he's got some really big ideas, which I think are awesome. He's got a big Earth Day program coming up. April 22nd. Uh, right? Yes, Great he day. wants yeah. to have the folks in the community go out and help clean up. Um, he's been taking the lead to make sure he goes to all of our public informational meetings on the sewer. Mm -hmm. That's one of his pet projects. And so uh, that's an area where he's focused. Um, I'm interested in economic development, uh, interested in bringing jobs to the county, and also interested in reducing fees for people. Remember the beach fee and those kind of things that we got rid of. Commissioner Anderson, he's got a big interest in animal welfare. And so he's taking the lead on helping us to evaluate kind of how we're handling animal welfare. And also he's been like our, our uh, I don't know what to call it, but he has uh, brought up a lot of ordinances. Okay. So he's looking, at the, he's looking at the local code and making proposed changes. Uh, Commissioner Steve Wilson, a brilliant guy, uh, he's focused, he's been involved on a lot of boards and commissions over the last like 15 or 20 years in the county. So he's got a real focus on government operations. He wants to make sure our roads are paved up to standard, make sure our infrastructure is in place, make sure our buildings get maintained, uh, make sure that we have the best and latest equipment in our uh, uh, ambulances to make sure. sure the citizens are taken care of. So that's kind of been his focus. And then uh, Commissioner Bucky is interested in, he's been real involved as our fire chief liaison, working with all the fire departments, and also his big emphasis is economic development as well. But we've looked at it from different angles. So all five of us are working in areas that we have interest in, and when we come together, it's a rich tapestry at our meetings where we're each bringing kind of our level of expertise and our interests to the board, to the full board, and we give each other a little leeway. You know, we've had an agreement, I think, among all of us that we're not going to try to embarrass each other publicly at the meetings. Even if we disagree, we'll disagree as gentlemen, and uh, we'll try to talk it out and be reasonable about it. And we understand that, you know, if... Um, if Commissioner Wilson, for instance, brings up an idea that I think we need to uh, do this over here on these buildings. We know that, for instance, we had some um, an issue about the airport. Commissioner Wilson's been real involved with that. And they, they wanted to put up some hangars. And so we looked to him and say, what's your recommendation? Does it make sense financially for us to make this decision? And we trust his judgment because that's where he's been focused. And so it's a great, you know, we don't always agree on everything, and you don't want that. Well, you want there to be the different perspectives. Consensus is good at times. Yeah, sure. but, uh, but we do come together, and I think your word is good. It's harmony and consensus that we come to usually. Paul, well, I think, again, as a citizen, you should be congratulated, all five of you, because the, as my wife and I, as we watch the shows on TV, they're well run. All right, you all are respecting each other, and the appearance, and obviously, is what's happening. You're governing. You're not fussing in your arguments. So I think that's great. Yeah. One other little quick note that we've done uh, that other boards haven't done. Um, I noticed as county administrator, and then later on watching the meetings as a citizen, you couldn't always tell how they were voting yeah. when they would vote on issues. They'd say I, and you couldn't say. So we've we've gone to the uh, idea of we'll raise our hand so, you can so that we, everybody can see. You know, are we voting yes or are we voting no? So hopefully that helps the citizens kind of know what their representatives are doing. And again, I think uh, President Jim Moran and Greg Todd, ever who's actually structuring and running the meetings, it's, it's going quite yeah, well. Greg's doing a great job. Yeah, yeah. He should be and Jim is too. Yeah. All right, let's move on to another topic. The always talked about Ken Island sewer project. What's yeah. Give us an update. Yeah, I thought I want to give folks a little update of what's happening. I went down last week to one of these um, public informational meetings that we're doing, and uh, they're going great. Uh, 
Part of the reason uh, that we reorganized government was to have a department, community affairs, which would be focused on making sure that folks fully understand what local government is doing, especially if it's a controversial subject. And uh, so anyway, where we're at now is all five commissioners, ev even those who were questioning the sewer during the campaign, all of us voted in favor of moving forward, at least with the engineering phase to, uh, of the sewer for the two communities that need it the most, which is Roman Coke and Ken Island Estates. And so um, we've hired several engineering firms based on low bids, et cetera. And Earth Data is the one, a local company, which is great that worked out. They're going out and actually going to each house. Well, first we're doing public informational meetings um, around the community and they've been very well attended. Hundreds and hundreds of residents have come out and we show them, here's the equipment that would go in the ground. Here's what it would look like and uh, and then they have paperwork they can look at they can even sign right there if they'd like to to have the engineer come on their property identify you know how far from the road is their current uh, septic system etc in the fields and all so those are all the things that the engineers have to pull together so that in nine to twelve months we can have a cost estimate and a better idea of what it will actually take to deliver public sewer there right right and the nice thing is uh, we did a TV show as you guys requested the commissioners requested the process is simple two simple questionnaires, making GPS locations for water and sewer and electrical boxes, and if the citizens wanted, you guys have done a great job, the citizens want to be there while they're doing this preliminary study, they can be there, or they can just sign up and say, okay, and do it. I, I think it's terrific. Good. Okay. Yeah. You, one of your favorite areas, economic development. What's yes. going on? So economic development, uh, was my number one focus during the campaign, and it has been my number one focus as a commissioner. Uh, and the full board has, you know, agreed and cooperated, and we're all working on making sure we bring more jobs here. One of the unfortunate things about being a um, commuter county, which is kind of what we are, you know, a large percentage, some studies say over 80% of our citizens have to leave the county every day to go to work. And what happens is uh, most of them, like me, leave the you know community between 6 and 7 a.m. in the morning and get back between 6 and 7 at night. Right. And um, all the things that happen in the middle of the day with your kids at school, uh, you know, you're not able to do any of that. So um, what I've been focused on is trying to find out ways to bring jobs to Queen Anne's County so our residents can do what I'm calling quit the bridge. Right. You know, quit having to drive over the bridge and be able to work right where you live and play. And so we've done a bunch of things to make that happen. Uh, some of the first things we did was we recreated the Department of Economic Development, separated it from tourism tourism so that it, we could have one focus on that. We went out and did a nationwide search and hired Jamie Gilbert as our new economic development director. Got a lot of energy, a lot of ideas. Right. A Maryland guy, but has been, had experience around the country. Um, and so we're focused on uh, working with our Economic Development Commission, working with the Chamber of Commerce and other groups to come up with every idea we can think of when it comes to economic development. And I am focused really like a laser on that. That's my number one priority. You know, uh, there was a guy that talked about you know, what guides you in your life. For me as a commissioner, my North Star is every decision that's brought to me, is this gonna help us bring more jobs here for our citizens? That's what I'm focused yeah, on. Yeah. And so we're doing all kinds of things. We've, uh, we were fortunate to find when we got here that the last board of commissioners had set up a pot of money for economic development. They had put half into a program that they already had engineered and ready to go and are, they gave out hundreds of thousands of dollars under the last board. We could continue that money from the recordation tax was coming into a fund. Half of it was going to this other program, but half of it was sitting in a pot of, that hasn't been used, been hadn't been tapped, over a million dollars there. Mm -hmm. So we asked our economic development director, our new economic development director, to come up with a program to utilize that money to help bring local jobs. And what we came up with was a program called the Bridge Program. Uh, and it, um, it stands for the Business Retention and Infrastructure Development Grant Enterprise Program. And basically the theme is, uh, this is to help current businesses who are already in the county grow and add jobs. Okay, and so they have to be an existing business or undertaking a site redevelopment. Uh, they have to be in one of our four target industry sectors, which would be advanced manufacturing, uh, you know, like um, power electronics or PRS guitars, uh, agriculture or seafood, uh, high technology or tourism. And they have, this project has to commit to um, maintaining or creating 50 full-time jobs. So it's big impact projects, projects that are gonna bring, uh, they either already have enough, or this will put them over the 50, or this is gonna bring 50. Uh, there has to be a minimum capital investment of a quarter million dollars. Um, the grants can be used for capital equipment purchases, building improvements, new construction, or what I was really excited about, infrastructure. The other grant program can't be used to pay for infrastructures, uh, payments, you know, so if they needed sewer, 
here's the perfect example. So somebody's coming into the Kenton areas with a building, and we're asking them uh, for a six-inch sewer main to their building, but there's four or five empty lots next to them. We want that now to be a nine-inch main so that the next few businesses can get sewer as well. This grant print money could be used to pay for that extra three inches so that it'll help other businesses. Uh, and then... Um, the recipient must commit to employment and investment numbers over a 24-month period. And if they don't do all the things they said they were going to do, they don't get all the money or it gets clawed back. And so it's a really exciting program. Uh, we're excited about that. The state of Maryland actually stepped in last month, and uh, one of our biggest manufacturers, PRS Guitars, agreed to give them 100000 so they could expand on their acoustic guitar business. And the commissioners are looking at maybe helping to match that to help them get the equipment they need going there. So uh, we're also looking at Wi-Fi. Uh, bringing like hot spots to maybe Centerville or the Kent Narrows and Commissioner Moran, Commissioner Bucky and I are all looking at different options because Wi-Fi really now, internet is really considered, um, you know, it's, it's almost like your electric, it's like utility. It's, it's actually being regulated now by the FCC, right? yeah. Okay. And um, we also are hiring a new planning zoning director. We're going to have someone who can take a look at our zoning regulations. You know, uh, a former commissioner likes to say the best thing government can do is get out of the way of business. <laughs> and I kind of agree with him there uh, well, for local government. So we want to make sure we don't have any regulations that are throttling business or uh, making it more difficult for them to operate here. So we're basically we're looking at... Um, putting together an economic development plan in conjunction with the Economic Development Commission, which will look at all, we're looking at maybe doing a TIF, a tax increment financing bond, which would just be focused on the Kent Narrows, um, so that we could put in all the infrastructure there, and then the increase in the value of property there would pay for uh, the tax, the taxes that come in off that would pay for the bond. And it doesn't in, involve the full faith and credit of the county, it involves the local businesses there focusing on making this happen. And so we're working with the Kent Narrows Development Foundation to possibly look at that. So the idea is, uh, uh, we want to do everything within our power to help bring more jobs here so that, um, you know, that dad who has to leave every morning at 6 a.m. and go over to D.C. to get a job that pays 70 or 80 grand sure. can work over here. I think, Paul, it's great that you guys are working with the existing businesses. I mean, what are, if, I, if I've made a commitment as a businessman to stay in Queen Anne's County and now I know local government's going to say, hey, we're going to help you. Yes. We're going to help you grow. We're going to help you create jobs. I think that's a great step. Good Thanks. for you guys. Yeah, that's thank great. you. Now, everybody's favorite topic. It's budget time. Now, this will be a test at how the commissioners get along. Give us a little update what's going on with the budget as you guys go through this process. Sure. So to, I've always said that budget is the number one policy document of local government because you put your money where your mouth is. Sure. And so we spend all year talking about we'd like to do this, like to do that, but really it's where we put our resources that count. And so this year, uh, as in years past, the county administrator and the county finance director, uh, that's um, Greg Todd and John Seaman, have been meeting with all the departments, not only from in the departments that report to the county commissioners, but also the other agencies that we fund but do not control, right. such as the Board of Ed, which takes more than half, such as Chesapeake College, the Sheriff's Department, the Library, Social Services, the Health Department, all these agencies that we help fund, they meet with all them and review what is it going to take to keep doing the baseline services that we have, and then what enhancements do would you like to see, and let's justify the enhancements. Um, so uh, they meet with them, and they've been meeting with them, and now they're ready to start bringing us all these departments and so I made a suggestion at our last meeting that uh, the first the first year let's have all 22 departments come in all these yeah. 22 agencies that first submitted, year you guys have gone yeah. through this cycle, now, I've right. been through it many times sure. as a county administrator but not all the not all the guys have and I want them to have an opportunity to meet with each department head to kind of hear from them directly here's why we need this extra person or this extra vehicle right. or whatever and um, we kind of already know where we're sitting on revenue there's two pieces to a budget right you got the money coming in and the money going out the budget is oftentimes more about what money's going out, but we have to know for sure how much money's coming in. It looks like we're going to have about two to three million dollars more than uh, we had in the budget last year that we can spend. Now we've already got on the table. Uh, the public schools have already submitted their budget. They want six million more dollars than last year. We don't have six million dollars. <laughs> we only have two to three million more dollars more than we had last year. So unless we gutted everybody, we wouldn't be able to fully fund this. But you know, like Bernie used to say, Bernie Sadowski, the superintendent of schools, it's the school board's job to present what they feel is their need. Sure. It's the commissioner's job to say this is what we can afford. And so everybody's got high priority projects. You know, as mentioned earlier, there's some new equipment we want to put on our ambulances to help save lives. Well, that's a high priority. But so is you know 
know, maybe uh, an extra teacher in a special needs class or whatever. And so we're going to look at all those. Plus, personally, I'd like to give some money back. Um, we already cut one fee uh, just last week, which was when you pay your property taxes, I made a motion that we take out the service fee if you pay it by semi-annually every six months because there was a service fee to cover the interest we would lose. But um, we did away with that. So that's one fee we were able to do away with. I'd like to give a little money back to the citizens, you know, this year, maybe some next year. Uh, so we'll see where it all sits. But we've only got 2 or $3 million left after all the baseline is taken care of. So the budget process is going to be four weeks in April. We'll meet for hours and hours and hours on end and hear from all these people yeah, coming in yeah, who, who will kind of do their um, sales pitch to sure. us about why they need what they need. And then at the end, we'll have to make a decision. In May, we'll have public hearings. After we make decisions, we'll have public hearings, one in each part of the county, uh, Kent Island, then Centerville, and then up north usually in Sudlersville in my district. And then we'll uh, get back together. We'll talk about all the input we've received from the public, and then we'll vote on a final budget uh, probably in early June. Okay. And I know you as a county commissioner and all the county commissioners want the public to get involved, watch the, on TV the presentations, okay, by the department. Oh, yes. So they have to understand. And you'd love them to come out to the public hearings and hear from them, hey, where they think their priorities are as individuals. That's okay? right. So you encourage that. Absolutely. Right? We want to hear from the public. I mean, we've been very transparent in the fact that we're your representatives. We want to hear from you what you want us to do. Uh, it's your money. You tell us how you'd like it to be spent, or do you want us not to spend any and give it all back to you? You tell us. You have a lot of tough jobs as commissioner. The budget might be the toughest. Oh, right? I think it is, yeah. That's kind of yeah. etched in stone, stone at least for a year. Right? That's right. You yeah. got, you guys and then we have a capital budget, which is five years, yeah. which looks at the bricks and mortar projects. And a so we'll be looking at schools budget. and other buildings, et cetera. Yes. Yeah, so, okay, yeah. good. Well, good luck. That's going to I'll give you some, a couple gray hairs. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Yeah. Paul, one of the things a lot of people talking about, uh, Commissioner Bucky was so enthusiastic when he talked about it, town hall meetings right you guys as candidates said we're going to keep communicating with you tell us how these are going and it seems like you're getting a great response yeah yeah so we had one in the first district i represent northern queen anne's county which is if you drew a line from centerville over to roosburg and then went north you know it's barclay southernsville sure. churchill kingstown uh, all these areas and all the farmland in between and so we did one in southernsville the southernsville senior center we had a great turnout what I tried to do is I invited all the department heads from local government to come out and explain to folks, here's what we do in northern Queen Anne's County. Because a lot of folks, I, you know, I, I lived in Southernsville for 12 years and now lived out in Roosburg for over a decade. I hear folks saying, you know, Ken Island gets everything. Right. You know, what do we got up here? Well, that's not really true. There's a lot of services that happen in northern Queen Anne's County. So we had each uh, department head come in and talk about Explain what they're doing in northern the Queen Anne's County. Local. And then we heard from the local citizens. We had over 40 citizens come out to it yeah. uh, and kind of say, well, here's the issues that concern me. And interestingly enough, the number one issue was an intersection. Uh, in Crumpton at Route 544 and 290, there's a blinking light intersection right. there. And we must have had a half dozen people come and talk about that one specific intersection. Safety concerns. The safety concerns. Yeah, yeah. yeah, folks felt there's been several accidents even this year. Um, a wife came out whose husband had been hit. A father came out whose daughter had been hit. And so um, now those both those roads are state roads. And the way you know a state road from a county road is a county road has a name and a state road has a number. So, you know, 544, 290. So the great thing was that that was on a Saturday. And then that coming Tuesday, we met with Greg Halsey, our State Highway Administration uh, representative for the Eastern Shore, Upper Eastern Shore. And we were able to spell out for him all the issues. And he immediately agreed to do a safety study. Right. And so right. they're already involved and starting to do a safety study for the intersection to look at all the options. Should there be a traffic circle there? Should there be a hard red light, green light? Should we reorganize the way or reorient the way that the, um, the intersection is? In the meantime, I want to encourage citizens to be extra careful when they go through that intersection. We don't need any more accidents while the study's going on. But hopefully over a couple months, the state will come back and tell us uh, what they feel like is the best approach to make that intersection safe. So really, it was just what a town hall meeting is supposed to be. People coming out, telling us their concerns, local government representatives then making things happen and uh, to help the public. And so I was really excited about that result. And you should, I mean, it's nice to know in the public, you encourage them to come to these meetings. Folks, everyone who says, well, they don't listen to me, you do. Yes. And if they come to the meeting, and like you said, the number one issue was that traffic safety issue. Yes. Immediately went to the state. There's a process taking place. So you cur now you have another one planned? I future? don't have one planned, but okay. hope to do one once a quarter is what I'm, okay, my game okay. plan is. Okay. Yeah. And, and Robert Bucky was saying the same thing. He had almost 70 people there. He had yes. 40 inquiries. And you all get information from the citizens, which you promise to do, and you keep doing it. Right? Yeah, and I want to encourage folks also, and, and they are taking advantage of this, 
So, you know, we all have county cell phones. Our numbers are published, and hopefully they'll put it on the screen here. If you've got a concern, you can email me the details, or you can call me, and I'll get back to you if I'm not able to answer right then. And I have people call me every week with all kinds of interesting issues. Had one call me yesterday. Had a long conversation with him on my way home from work and was able immediately to get a county department head working on that subject for yeah. him. And so uh, we're here to represent you and to help citizens. And so we want to hear from you. If you've got a specific issue that the county can help you on, I had one uh, resident who, uh, in Crumpton actually, there there's a... Um, uh, there, there's a porta pot sitting out next to his property. He said, you know, it, it makes my property, you know, it's terrible to have to see that. Right so I talked to our parks guy and they put out a little screening fence for him. Yeah. So I, I, I called him back. Is everything okay now? He's like, it's great. So those little things the county government can do for you, let us know and we'll try to help. We can't always do it, but if we can, we'll try. Well, it's nice to know there's a two way process you know, in place. Hey, citizens, you come to the meetings, email us, talk to us, right. and we're going to do the best we can. There's always a compromise somewhere right, to solve these problems. That's right. Okay? Yeah, and the good thing is, as I mentioned at the beginning of the meeting, to kind of wrap it up, is that all the commissioners are working to well together. I think and, so, yeah, uh, and so, you know, I think that we're shaping up to be a, a really, uh, you know, if I had to say so much, a, a really good commission. I don't agree with everybody all the time, and uh, but... Um, I respect the other guys, and we're working well together, and respect, as you know, is the basis of any relationship. Well, I think as a citizen, Paul, of this county for 40 years, the first 100 days you guys are off to a great start because it looks like you've made a commitment. Let's get organized. Let's listen to the citizens. And by golly, let's get some things done. So yep. for that, you to be congratulated. Thank you. All five of you, okay? Thank you. We hope to be a group that is responsive to the public and gets big things done. Good, good. Well, good luck with the budget, Thank all right? You. And the good news is it's almost 60 degrees out, and maybe winter's done. Paul, That's right. right. I'm excited okay. about it, yeah. Thank you for joining Thanks, us, yeah. okay? I'm Fred McNeil. Thank you for watching QAC TV. You've been watching Commissioner's Corner with Paul Comfort, another effort by your local government to reach out to you and tell you what's going on. And hopefully you, like Paul, gave some great examples. Give them a call, send them an email, go to the public meetings, go to any of the meetings, especially these budget meetings. Tell them how you think government should be run. They'll listen to you and they'll work out a compromise. Again, Paul, thank you very much. I'm Fred McNeil. My time is up. Thank you for your time, and we're going to see you next time.